Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tesla Life number 193. Here we are, the 17th of March, 2021. And as always, Tesla never sleeps. There's a ton of news this week uh, to talk about and discuss. So let's get to it. Uh, all of, always with us uh, every week, we have Mr. Patrick Connor join us from the West Coast. How are you today, sir? I'm excellent. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. <laughs> exactly. So everyone had their shamrock shake today? <laughs> <laughs> I will be tipping a pint during the uh, What Drives a Show, yes. <laughs> ah, yes, and he's got the green shirt even. And of course, uh, Mr. Casey Green joining us uh, from the D.C. area. He doesn't have to really wear a green shirt. It's in his name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's pinch resistant. <laughs> I'm pinch resistant, yes. So uh, today was fun. We went to uh, we got in the car to go to the Tesla to pick up a, a part, and uh, thankfully they called us before we got to the toll road and said, uh, "Turn around." I would have been a little more annoyed had I re- arrived after paying the toll because they don't reimburse tolls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Literally, exactly. their 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 shop is on the exit, and so you you're on it for the exit, and they charge you for it. Was oh, government man. for you? <laughs> yeah. Well, we are live. Let's just check the old chat room. Is anybody in the chat room to confirm that we're live? Can anybody hear me? So uh, send us a note if you're out there. Just send us a note in and we will we'll designate you as first. How's that? That's even better. Ooh. Yes. Get the gold star. Well, on the live stream, we've got the uh, wrong show number. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they made the same mistake as me. Ah, they're they're thinking, yeah, they're thinking, oh, that's yesterday. That's last week's show. Ah. But it says live, so I clicked it. And oh, there's our first one. Uh, All right. From Melbourne, Australia, I'm assuming. Melbourne. Hello. Hello, Irwin. How are you today? Hi, Irwin. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we got a ton of news. Let's get to it. We sure uh, do. What are we going to start with here? This week, we're going to start with the uh, MIC Model 3 is now top pick in quality over a survey. And, of course, Patrick knows exactly what an MIC is now. He didn't I know was it. going to, yeah, I did not know. <laughs> uh, you guys are speaking in code. That's made in China. <laughs> I was going to make, a, I gonna make, a, I gonna make an OPP joke. <laughs> <laughs> Am I saying you know M-I-C. me? <laughs> <A-E-Y>. <laughs> <laughs> so made in China Model Three <clears throat> was uh, surveyed, and uh, it, uh, in, of course, in China, and uh, a number of customers filled out the survey. And uh, this uh, particular time, uh, the Model Three came out with the least amount of modifications or uh, fixes that had to be put in place after the car was purchased. So uh, that's good to see uh, that uh, the car is uh, solid in China, and uh, it is uh, it's ahead of the charts at this point. So uh, number one. So uh, very good to see. And uh, now I would love there to be some sort of a standardized, uh, I guess, survey that could be done across the world. That would that would be ideal. Obviously, that's not going to happen. But uh, it would be a, a great to have some sort of a standardization that everyone could follow to submit. And uh, we could see how Tesla ranks in other markets outside of China. That would be cool. JD uh, Power Worldwide? <laughs> exactly. Something along that line where we could, have, we could have the ability where people get surveyed. You know, it, it should be easy to do because, you know, it's just a website where you could just send an email to an owner and they could fill out the information and submit it and then uh, break it up by country. And uh, that would be kind of cool to be able to see how it rates. Uh, because of course, we believe that there could l- literally be some some changes or modifications uh, between different factories that build the car. So oh, yeah. what what, uh, what type of, uh, you know, uh, Tesla, of course, uh, would be interested to pit location after location or two location to, you know, say who's best, who's got the bragging rights. And uh, that would be a way to do that. And we've seen yeah. they do. We do they, 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 Musk is not immune to it because of the way that uh, uh, Boca Chica versus uh, Florida, with right? The Starship. Yes. So, so the next question I have then is, with this, 
revelation or confirmation of the fact that the cars made in China are better than the cars made in Fremont, will that translate in to the new refresh on the Model S and Model X, or are we going to have to wait for them to be able to shut down the whole plant and raise it from uh, after Berlin and Fremont, and or after Berlin and Texas and uh, and and uh, Shanghai are fully operational to the point they can carry? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure which way they would go. Obviously, right now uh, S and X are only produced in Fremont, mm -hmm. uh, but with with uh, Berlin, with Shanghai, with uh, Texas uh, coming online, is there going to be another S or X or combination line put out to another location at some point? I, I would imagine it would be good to have some redundancy. You don't want to spend a whole lot of money if you're not actually going to use the line in any great volume. But right. uh, to have that redundancy would be ideal uh, if there was a situation like this past year where Fremont right. had to be shut down for a period of time. It would be nice to be able to allow, you know, Berlin or Texas to pick up the slack uh, or, or Shanghai. So uh, don't it know. Would be, it would be a good contingency, even if they don't actually typically build them <laughs> in Berlin, but to have everything they need to make Model S and X in Berlin should anything happen in North America. That way they could just pick it up. Like I said, even if it's not always there, always running a thousand cars a week, if they could just have the ability to make a thousand cars a week in storage in a corner of Berlin and just roll it out, should they, uh, should they for some reason lose the ability to do it here? That would be really difficult to stand up a line um, like that. You would have to have it running at least at low volume all the time, so mm -hmm. all the kinks are worked out, and then be able to ramp it up if you needed it. Yeah, because imagine if it was sitting there mothballed. And uh, then you said to your employees, guess what? We're building S's today. First time ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, so yeah. I'm saying not, not never, but like, um, like kind, of, kind of like how they do now where they kind of switch them up between three and Y. I mean, that's obviously you got to switch the molds mm -hmm. around. You got to get all the parts back on the line. But it's a little easier, like, like you guys said, if, if that's something they're used to doing. You're like, oh, it's Y day. Oh, it's three day. Yeah. But with S and X, as, as, as much as I love those vehicles, they could take a quarter off of building them and not have a huge financial impact. Uh, um, not that I'm encouraging that by any means. Oh, no, yes. <laughs> so it's, it's the three and the Y that really matter. They're, they're high volume, high sellers. Um, it's far more important to have those being built on three continents than it is for S and X. True. Yeah. But they, they, they haven't actually taken a quarter off with it yet. They've taken a month off or a couple of weeks right. off. Yeah. And, and yeah. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't saying they should or that they have. I'm just saying they could without it being a massive impact. Yeah, they should. They just need a, the ability to handle it. But supposedly, the, the refresh is using uh, some of the new techniques. Like the, uh, the the rear end is all cast, and then allegedly the front is is casting as well. But we haven't seen anything to deny or confirm that because all the cars we can get our hands on are owned by somebody else. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, that makes total sense, though. I mean, Tesla's developed these techniques. Uh, why wouldn't they use it when they have a, a redesign come out? Yeah, it's a perfect opportunity to do, especially after having the line shut down for a month in a row. Exactly. Well, let's move on to the next topic, and that, of course, is uh, Cybertruck. Casey, what do you got on that? Oh, yes, let's talk about the Cybertruck. So, uh, some folks were asking Elon if you could use the Cybertruck to power a tiny home, and Elon said, Yes, so that's exciting because it's, uh, it, it, it further cements what we already knew when they told us, hey, the Cybertruck has you know, 240 and 110 outputs, uh, or 240 and 120 outputs, and uh, the other vehicles for Tesla have a strict no off, no, uh, your vehicle has a power plant policy. So there was uh, some folks in Texas who hooked their small batteries on their Model 3s up to uh, some power inverters to get some 120 to run the fridge and then when the car threw a uh, replace battery notification they took it into the service center and the service center said oh we saw your YouTube video denied <laughs> <laughs> oh man so uh, that uh, yeah that's that's gonna be interesting if uh, we've got this uh, this picture that was uh, shared uh, with um, uh, obviously, a conception uh, of a Cybertruck pulling a, a Cyber Trailer. It looks like in this particular shot. Yeah. But uh, 
all sorts of things open up if you allow the truck to power the trailer. So it could power the trailer to the point where, you know, it's just high, you know, just just handling, you know, some issues like maybe able to use it for a little heat, uh, lighting, um, internet connection, whatever. Uh, but you can also look at, is the trailer going to start to have its own battery pack at some point? Um, well, we, we saw that German one last year on What Drives Us that, uh, that has a traction motor and an 80 or 100 kilowatt hour battery. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, imagine that if, that if there was a battery in the trailer and it could be used for regen uh, when the, car, the, the, the vehicle is rolling, uh, it could be uh, used as, you know, to, to operate that uh, camper uh, while you're on site. And what better, like, like most, most campsites also do have the ability to, uh, you know, have their own power source as well. Plug it in, charge up both batteries uh, while it's sitting there for three days. Or that, uh, the talk about the solar canopy, being able to have that camper uh, maybe roll out a, a larger than the roof itself, uh, use it as awnings or whatever. Uh, a whole bunch of great things could be in place uh, for a trailer uh, to be used uh, with those type of charging abilities. Oh, that would be awesome. I, I like the design of this one too. Uh, that that would be awesome if they could get some sort of uh, toilet facilities and then a couple bedrooms in there, kitchenette, boom. A lot of folks are like, oh, but the gooseneck won't work. Um, <laughs> as long as they have a provision that it stays the same height, it'll fit. It might yeah. reduce your turning radius though. Exactly. It just has to, uh, you know, fifth the wheels are popular. I cannot yeah. see why uh, they would not have that type of an option uh, for the Cybertruck. You're, you're right. You just you just have to look for the turning radius and, and how far that vehicle can, can actually turn. Push it back a little bit more. Yeah. But uh, one thing I did notice every time that this one and another one, uh, I think the one that Tesla showed off, uh, get reused in tweets, uh, typically when somebody is wrong about SpaceX, Elon's like, no, 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 it can't work that way, or no, it won't go that way. And uh, he's never once said that this trailer isn't going to be able to go that way. Because, <laughs> hmm. like, like yeah. even if somebody's like, like, does a render, and they're like, oh, here's the, how this starship will land, and then he's like, those legs are too small. Or then later on, he's like, yeah, there's not going to be any legs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's kind of quick to react to those things, isn't he? Which I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the fact um... that he hasn't done that yet gives me hope. <laughs> or is he just? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess it could give you hope, but I would depend on it because uh, it just seems that he cannot answer everything on the internet. Uh, because yeah. well, he was uh, responding to the picture. Well, <laughs> so that, that's true. That's, that's why true. I was like, well, he didn't say the picture is wrong. Well, and then the, the, the tweet, the tweet actually was a tiny house. It said really nothing about a camper. That's it true. It said that's a true. tiny house, and the <laughs> so guy threw up a. The guy threw up a picture in his tweet of a, of a trailer. So, yeah. you know, th- that was obvious that that's what he was talking about. Although he called it a tiny house, and then Elon just responded, yes. So Yeah, so in that case, if he was literally talking about a tiny house, then then, then he wouldn't have anything to correct with the picture. But yeah. then when you look at the one that Tesla showed in on, on the cyber, uh, on their site, it, um, it's a bumper pull. It's not a, it's not a, f- a fifth wheel. So that, that'll be interesting to see what they do with that and if anybody actually makes it because it doesn't doesn't mean that Tesla won't pull it out of their hat but it doesn't seem that that's actually on their roadmap right right so it makes sense though that the that the Tesla when people were doing this to get power from their SNX they were not designed for that the Cybertruck right. is absolutely going to be designed to be a power source for, for the job site tools and, <laughs> yeah exactly and yeah. and so if you want to as long as you're within the amperage of whatever that outlet supplies, then yeah, go for it. Plus, there'll be zero cyber drugs with free supercharging. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and and of course, the we don't know the cyber truck battery size either. Uh, we know the mileage uh, goes up quite substantially at the three motor one, uh, yeah. but uh, how big that uh, actual battery pack is going to be, we don't know. But uh, as Patrick said, they're probably going to build in redundancy because they know it's going to be used on job sites. They yeah. know people are going to use the, the 240 and the 120 uh, power outlets uh, for you know work. So uh, absolutely, it makes sense that uh, the camper can take advantage of that as well. Uh, the redundancy is probably going to be built into the system. Yeah, plus we probably have 
uh, a lot of folks are going to use it all day and then find out, oh, that was only 10% of the battery. <laughs> Versus yeah. with SNX, that, that could be half. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of nice little bells and whistles for a, a contractor that's out on the site all day. It's probably going to buzz them and say, hey, you know, you've only got 50% uh, of your battery left or something right. along that line. So why is like, why is why is there a green bar going across both <laughs> the uh, the brake light and the the the, 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 the fog lights? <laughs> oh, you think they might use a Rivian trick, do you? Okay. I mean, they've got big old progress bar shaped uh, light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would be cool if you could set to say, I need to leave whatever thirty percent so that I can get back home, and then during the day, if it got down to that, it would stop and just yeah. shut off, and then. You can make the decision about whether or not you want to use a little more or not, uh, yep. or yeah. yeah, override it or or uh, take the, yeah. take the hint. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like Maybe you've got a generator that you fire up at that point and use instead, or, or whatever. I mean, it, it, it's important. a second cyber truck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you the phone and get two more <laughs> sent to the job site. Yeah. They could put a little message up on the screen, or they could uh, hit you with the. Um, uh, the text notifications that they are to use for the uh, supercharging. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you're not building an off-grid uh, mansion <laughs> so you have service. Yep. Oh, we're done for the day. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Time to go. Absolutely. Uh, on our uh, next story here, we're going to take a look at a bit of a problem that was happening at Fremont. Uh, yes, this is taken from a fire truck. Uh, there yep. was a bit of a fire that happened at, it looks like the Gigapress. Uh, it happened for a short amount of time. That's not a big deal here. Uh, we never really got a clarification as to uh, what was actually on fire, uh, but uh, it was bad enough that the fire department uh, from Fremont was called and was on site uh, for a little bit of time uh, to uh, make sure that the uh, fire was put out. So uh, that's uh, kind of interesting. That uh, another good reason to have its own little building. <laughs> With the Gigapress, right? Yeah, yes. so that's not the main factory. Nope, that's, the that's just the Gigapress building. Yep, right. exactly. So uh, it, uh, and again, not a big deal. Didn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't stopping production or anything for any great length of time. It was just, uh, looks like it was a couple of hours until they got straight away. Yeah, and we're talking about a machine that uh, weighs hundreds of tons. It's full of molten aluminum and hydraulic lines. So, I mean... Occasionally, you're gonna have maybe a problem. That, yeah. yeah, maybe maybe this is why they're outside. <laughs> <laughs> that was smart. Maybe it wasn't just because they don't fit in the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. So uh, ho ho hopefully, though, if it's like a maintenance issue, like they learned, oh, we can only use the, ho the hoses for ten thousand cars before we gotta change the hoses, or mm -hmm. or maybe somebody was doing maintenance and they didn't clean up correctly, and so now there's a, uh, a proper procedure in place because. Inside Terra, Texas, and inside Berlin, they are enclosed, as far as we can tell, and that would be unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, next, uh, let's move on to another topic that's near to, and dear to many people's hearts, and that's what do you pay for insurance for your Tesla? Too uh, much. Because, uh, yeah, too much, exactly. It's not, not too many people saying, I don't pay enough. But, well, uh, less than my what, other cars, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> We got uh, word uh, this week uh, that insurance apparently is coming to Illinois, Washington, and Texas, as well as another country, Israel, is going to be getting uh, the option for Tesla insurance. So uh, as soon as we posted this up on the, um, on the uh, Tesla Life uh, Twitter feed, which is at the Tesla Life, if you don't know already, uh, we had a whole bunch of responses of people saying, how about my state? How about my city? How about my country? So there's a lot of pent up demand where people uh, believe they're getting a bit of a raw deal on insurance and would like to have the ability to compare that to what Tesla is going to be offering. So, uh, but uh, California obviously was the front runner and the starter of this. And uh, now we've got uh, three more U.S. states and uh, a country of Israel is going to be getting the chance as well. So uh, that will be interesting to see. Now, you guys aren't in any of these three states, but uh, I'm sure that uh, if you had the chance, you would certainly like to get a quote, see what oh, it yeah, is compared to what to you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I need to see, though, if it would take uh, any of my multi-product discounts away if I were to drop car insurance, because that, that, that right. could make a difference right there. Yep, the bundling. They got yes. you by the bundle. 
They got me by the bundles, baby. <laughs> Show title. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Let me put that in the chat. <laughs> yeah, so I, just the bundle. Point, I just want to point out that, okay, started in California, and now they've added Washington. In between those two states, there's this little place called Oregon. And they skipped right over, so we're the only West Coast state, not counting Alaska, to uh, have uh, not have this Tesla insurance. Come on, that's not right. Exactly. Maybe your law, your law people are getting in the way. Yeah, it would be nice to know why they selected these particular locations. Uh, are they still reselling, or do they have their own now? Are they still reselling what? Uh, oh, other, other people's or okay. somebody that they were effectively reselling. Yeah, as far as I know, it's not themselves. They're reselling, but so uh, still working on that, that, that certainly could change with volume. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Green, they only found uh, that there's now, in the new firmware update, there's a section for the car to log insurance telemetry. Uh, mm. Yes. And, so uh, you don't need that little app or uh, a little dongle. Little module, yeah. Uh, the car's going to do it for you. Right. And, and we had already assumed that the car was probably phoning home a little bit, even though they say it's done on the website. But... The fact that now they're doing this, uh, somebody asked Green, hey, could you generate some data and see what happens? And he's like, nah, I'm no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly who I am and have them cut me off. Never. <laughs> they, are, they, they already don't like me, you know. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Airbags deployed on number 7,000. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. And so uh, David says maybe Tesla insurance could add house insurance for bundling. Absolutely. Yeah. If I could switch from my current bundle to a Tesla bundle and maybe some Tesla solar roof and power wall and Tesla HVAC with my car, I would, I would enjoy that. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. As Tesla starts making more home energy products, it would make sense to go into home insurance as well. Yeah. And, cool. and then Irwin said the reason that they uh, can't go in Europe is, uh, the combination selling is banned in the EU. Oh. Yeah. Thanks, okay. guys. Well, we shall see. Uh, Casey's got our next story about Starlink. What's going yes. on there? So Mark had alluded to what happens with, uh, you know, powering some internet on your trailer. Well, Tesla, oh, not Tesla, sorry. Starlink has applied to uh, test out Sorry, I'm on the wrong page here. I'm distracted by this Model 3 picture. <laughs> <laughs> to test out uh, their their uh, their receiver on moving vehicles, uh, particularly, again, on the Air Force uh, aircraft, which they've done in the past, but now it looks like they're doing it again. And uh, somebody said, uh, wrote an article like, ooh, you're going to be able to use your Starlink on a car. And Elon's like, eh, not, not quite. Uh, there, there we go with Elon corrections again. He said, yeah. yes, it'll work on RVs. He said RVs, trucks, Buses and airplanes, and uh, well, that's that's exciting because uh, the solution right now for for mobile internet is, uh, is can be kind of costly, and, and and the quality might not be what you expect. Whereas Starlink is going to be consistent as long as you got a clear view of the sky and you're in the coverage area. I mean, right now the coverage area is growing. They just launched two more satellites last week, or two more sets of 60 satellites last week, and they went yep. off without a hitch. Another 120 added to the fleet. Yes. Yep. And then they expanded to, um, uh, I forget the countries. But uh, Europe France, and- France yeah. and uh, UK already has it. So uh, mm -hmm. that's Canada, France, UK, and the United States. And then I think there's one in the Southern Hemisphere, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah, but another one in Europe and then somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere, if I, if I get that right. So, this so is yeah, cool. yeah, they're going to be testing with the Air Force. Um, and like you said, they've done that before, but uh, doing some more testing on uh, some of the planes. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, it, it will be interesting to see how fast you can be going and still get the phase array antenna to work. So. Uh, uh, on aircraft, it, w it is an interesting one. On a bullet train, is another interesting use case. Uh, <laughs> that's well, a lot I, of uh, fast recomputing uh, 
I imagine as, if you're traveling in the direction of the satellite, you'll be plenty fine as long as you're going less than orbital speed. But uh, <laughs> coming counter or across uh, the path, but if you're any, anything that's not traveling along with the satellite, that might be a little more difficult. But I guess yeah. this is what they're testing here. Because you can yep. easily make an airplane fly at 300, 400 miles exactly. an hour. Exactly. And, and like you said, all uh, four directions. <laughs> as, they, as they fill up the network, more and more satellites, like, like they're talking 40,000 satellites, right? Eventually. Uh, to uh, do the 40, whole thing. 42,000 in the lower shell, right? Or 42,000 yeah, so, for the whole first phase. So you've got, uh, you've as you start filling in these holes, uh, again, how fast can they switch? They're going to test that. They're going to figure it out because uh, this is a big market that they're involved with. Uh, yeah. Obviously, they want as many different uh, aspects of the market to be available to them as they can. Mm -hmm. And then when you add the laser links to the rest of the satellites, is that starting next year or later this year? Uh, Don't know right when it's the... starting, but it is coming, yeah. Yeah, right Right now only the polar orbit star links have the laser links. And uh, so once the satellites can talk to each other, that will make switching even faster than whatever they can do today because they don't have to involve the ground in the right. process except for uh, the final connection at the front and uh, wherever you are. Right, yeah, so that should lower latency and increase bandwidth. Especially yep. for anything over the horizon. So we keep our eye on that as it, uh, as it grows. Anybody uh, in the comments, if you've got uh, Starlink, let us know. See uh, how, how it works for you, what kind of up and down speeds you're getting. Be interesting to find out and of course the area you're in. Absolutely. And then uh, ac Acronym Jim said that, uh, oh, sorry, uh, he, he was talking about uh, Starlink Ahoy, but uh, Irwin was saying that uh, Australia was the one that I was thinking of. That is cool. Definitely. In the Southern Hemisphere. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, just to make an announcement, <clears throat> we talked already, <clears throat> excuse me, about the uh, Twitter feed at the Tesla Life. We're also available on our Facebook feed. That would be the Tesla Life numeral one. And uh, finally, uh, Casey, of course, has helped us just recently. And you can now get this uh, podcast uh, in audio function on Apple. So you can do that. Or you can go to our actual website, uh, which Casey will type in the bottom. I can hear him typing right now. He's going <laughs> to put that in. And uh, you can actually sign up for the RSS feed if you'd like to do that. Uh, or you can do it through Apple. If you do it through Apple, please give us a five-star review. That would be great. That helps us uh, get in the eyes of more people. Next story. Superchargers of the far north. What do you got, Patrick? That is right. So uh, it's not quite ready that you can just drive to Alaska. But, uh, <laughs> that would be uh, nice. Yeah. Um, Soldatna, Alaska, which is uh, south of Anchorage, has a supercharger that has been permitted. And uh, so this is expected to open in Q3 of this year. And this will be the first one in Alaska. So um, it's a V3. There's at least four stalls. And um, that's exciting. There's... Um, if, if you go to supercharge.info, you can uh, see the little blue dot on there and see that that one's coming. Um, you're not exactly able to uh, drive through British Columbia to get to it yet uh, from the lower 48, but uh, that's okay. you got to start somewhere. And um, so in the 90s, I took a sabbatical, and we took the ferry up to Haines, Alaska, and then it, this was um, in the fall because that's when the eagles all come to Haines. And then, but there's something called terminal frost where like everything starts shutting down. And so as, as that was coming, uh, I had to get back. So we drove back Alcan Highway through the Yukon uh, and Northwest Territory and um, British Columbia. And it was, it was a great vacation. And uh, so uh, I'm hoping that one day soon in the next, you know, couple decades, that I'll be able to do that same drive, but all supercharged. That would be really cool. Yeah, I would think that after putting a point in Alaska, and there's also talk of putting another point in Alaska. That uh, once that uh, once that starts to happen, uh, then it's going to be a natural to uh, to electrify the uh, Alaskan Highway through British Columbia. So uh, right. and connected with those, connected with dots. Whistler, <laughs> British Columbia. Which right, I can get fantastic. to Whistler now, which is which is a fantastic place to go. Lots of yeah. fun, but that's about as far north <laughs> as I can get from yeah here. 
Exactly. So uh, there is a there is a blue dot that's uh, a little further. I think that's Jasper, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong, uh, but uh, that's another point uh, in British Columbia. But uh, certainly Alaska is a lot further north, yes. and there's going to be a lot of a lot of uh, chargers in between those two points for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Casey, what do you got about FSD? I, I want to hear that you got FSD. Did that happen, Casey? Maybe. <laughs> I, got, I got an update 2021.4.12. I've just finished filming my deep dive on it, and uh, I checked all over the service menu and the updates menu. I still have the same version of Maps, and there is no Update Now button uh, that I can see. doesn't mean it's not there. It's just it's hoping that it's not visible. <laughs> we got to send a note over to Green the Only and let us know when that is in place. <laughs> yes. Somebody yes. said he was digging in it, but I didn't see anything explicitly yet, so I will be... Okay. Trolling his tweets. I actually I have the same version as Casey for once. I'm not a t- couple versions behind. Nice. That's nice, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's because he's getting us all ready to be able to hit the button. Just, right. And as soon as that update Hopefully. came, I ran down there and checked. <laughs> Is the button there? Is the button there? <laughs> uh, no, not yet. Cold I did that last night. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. oh. A couple times today as well. <laughs> you know, typically, if it comes in at night, I'll update it. And then I might, uh, if I go out at all, I'll, I'll uh, get the release notes. And oh, um, on my release notes, it didn't just say minor fixes. It said cold weather modifications and minor fixes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, Where was that oh. in December when we needed it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have abolished winter. It's springtime now. <laughs> the, the timing is a little bit off. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, the timing works because this is the, the things they figured out they didn't have exactly right. So it had to, you had to go through winter to figure them out. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Oh, man. They're ready for next winter. Exactly. But what I liked about this story also is that uh, they talked about doubling the amount of FSD uh, testers out there uh, yes. with version 8.2. And uh, apparently that's happened. But the really interesting thing, and we've talked about this several times before, is they've taken a few F- FSD testers out of the program. Yes. Mm. yes. Uh, Elon explicitly said that in his tweet announcement that they had expanded the program to the 2,000 people. Uh, he said they weren't being safe, and somebody asked him if it was the camera, and he answered yes, but it wasn't explicitly saying that, yes, they're using the camera. Uh, everybody just assumed that. He also could have just noticed that they weren't in the wheel or that they uh, were doing something stupid on YouTube. And everything would qualify in that same answer for the yes. But... Uh, we do know that a bunch of the people in the public program are in S's and X's and older ones because the refresh isn't on the road yet. So those don't have cameras. Right. Yeah. You'll stop the camera in those. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, but it's easy to pick those guys that make YouTube videos out uh, of them being dangerous. Oh, yes. And, uh, and at least they're, uh, and I know that Tesla trolls the YouTube uh, forum. So uh, mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see that uh, they, They've caught a few of them because the evidence is right there and uh, kicked them out. Good for them. Matches up yeah. with the logs, too. <laughs> this is an interesting aspect of having a connected car. Uh, you know, they, they can play Big Brother and watch you unless you disable data sharing. But then part of this FSD beta probably requires you to have data sharing or, uh, to participate in it. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it, it, it's... I find it very interesting that kicking people out. So this is a, a feature that they've paid for, but that but participation in the beta is is optional and at Tesla's discretion. And they don't want people doing crazy, stupid stuff. I mean, we we implore everybody watching not to be dumb all the time. Uh, it's, this is an ADAS system. It's not level five. You do have to pay attention. And, and yet there are still people out there being dumb. And yeah, like you said, Mark, they deserve to be kicked out. They're, they only make all of us look bad. Yeah, like, like you can just imagine uh, if there was an accident caused because of the, you know, the the show, the show these people are putting on for themselves or their viewers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can just imagine the fallout. Uh, it's it, we've got to eliminate these type of people from this because they're not serious. They don't want. They're they're not there to help this move forward for everyone. They're there for themselves and themselves only. And uh, mm-hmm. they should definitely be removed from this type of a beta test. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, 
forget where I was going with that, but <laughs> we see these people uh, doing the hoaxes or actually doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. Uh, the hoaxes are the people who are running down the freeway, and then when they see somebody looking at their car, they pretend to be asleep. That doesn't uh, doesn't help the people who don't understand how this stuff works. No, it uh, just feel more comfortable. It just fuels the fire for those that don't know what's actually going on. Exactly, and then then we've got the folks like that idiot TikTok boy who uh, his mom was recording him, where he got out of the seat and went in the back seat. That's just yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. They should Absolutely. just get his car back from him, buy it back, and then just have a nice day, son. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they have weight sensors in the seats, so if they detect that uh, someone has left the driver's seat, it should just pull over and stop. Well, right now it isn't. Well, they could pull over with the, the FSD equipment, but uh, mm -hmm. the AP 2.5 and the ones that aren't running the new software, they should stop in the lane as if the person had passed out and failed to respond to any of the stuff. But, yeah, uh, safely, not just like slam on the brakes. But oh, no, no, it, 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 it slowly yeah, does yeah. it, yeah, a mile an hour per second. And um, so it would take a minute uh, from a regular freeway speed to, to hit that point. The flashers would be on the whole time. But uh, we saw this same misunderstanding occur with uh, one of the short sellers did a FOIA request, and Tesla answered that, yeah, this is a level two system. We don't plan to do anything with it because... If you're answering a government entity, you don't give them extra information. You tell them exactly what they asked. And yes, this version of FSD beta is never going to go any further because we're going to be on to another version. And in fact, they actually said that later in the letter. Hey, right. if we plan to add more features, we're going to do like we already do. We're going to do internal beta, beta rollout publicly, and then we're going to go on to the next thing. So, exactly. I mean, it was all yeah. consistent with how they're actually behaving. It was, yeah. That was an intentional misreading uh, because, like you said, if they're, they're taking like the first sentence and, and making that headlines, and then not reading the second and third sentence that say there will be more features or, and we will seek approval for those as required. I mean, it was, and, it was and, ridiculous. Uh, and to follow that up, there was a uh, really violent crash with a Model Y that underrun a, uh, a, a semi trailer, and all of the news organizations were like, oh. It, it could have been autopilot. Uh, no, it, it, you don't know that. Uh, I, I, I quote tweeted uh, uh, the Tesla Life uh, on, on Twitter, and I was like, well, just because the car can have a $10,000 feature doesn't mean that the person actually paid for it. Yeah. And if even if they did, it doesn't mean that they had actually turned it on and used it for that particular segment of the trip. Because if that was autopilot basic, it would have not enabled itself because you can't use autopilot basic off of the freeway. Yeah, it's That's interesting. Right. There are there are cars of all brands that get into accidents every day. Oh yeah. And yet, if uh, Tesla does its uh, a headline with "Was autopilot enabled?" <laughs> this is self driving's fault. Uh, yeah, it's it's a it, weird. It is uh, it is a double edged sword with with Tesla when it comes to media, though. It uh, is. They, they get they get a lot of free publicity, and they also have the the spotlight on them if someone believes something is wrong. Uh, so. Right. It's, it's both but, ways but, for them. But a lot of the is something wrong is conjecture. Like, oh, you shouldn't be testing this with me in the public road. Uh, just because it's called beta test doesn't mean that you're at any more risk than the drunk driver sitting next to you sliding in and out of the lanes. In fact, today, I haven't seen anybody report on this, uh, but I have seen you know the tweets from the sheriff's department that, hey, um, we don't know that he was on autopilot. We don't think he was. Right. Yeah. That, that didn't end up having anywhere near as widespread a reach. Right. But jumping to conclusions is so much more fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> jump, 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 everybody jump. <laughs> it's called a jump to conclusions, Matt. <laughs> uh, well, let's move on. Next, uh, we've got a story that Patrick's going to be interested in. Because oh. uh, this, of course, is the paint shop equipment is starting to get installed at Giga Texas. So uh, they've been spotted uh, on site, uh, trucking in the material and putting it into the paint shop area. Uh, so equipment is now being installed as, of course, Giga Texas and Giga Berlin race to the finish line. And, uh, and uh, certainly uh, going to crown either Patrick or myself the winner in this particular bet as to which one crosses the finish line first. Yes, I love the fact that our competition here, that they, they've taken our competition and made a headline out of it. So, That's right. Um, yeah. Thank you, Eva Fox. Uh, uh, for, uh, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy our show. and <laughs> you're, you're welcome to quote us on this uh, battle anytime. 
<laughs> yeah, great to see that uh, all all sorts of people are cluing in that this is definitely a race. Uh, as uh, as of course, Giga Texas now has three ships a day and is uh, trying trying to catch up. But uh, I may be biased, but I don't think they're going to catch them. Uh, and, and for, the, and for those who are, who are who are new or just tuning into this, uh, Patrick is Team Terra Texas. Go Austin. And, Go Austin and uh, and uh, Mark is Team Giga Berlin. Yeah, I really think if, if Berlin fails on this one, man, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I gave uh, Mark a head start, but then he got attacked by bats and ants <laughs> and birds and trees. <laughs> Migrating ants, exactly. Terrible, terrible. Do you do you think that <laughs> Team Terra Texas is going to? <laughs> Bring us in uh, a future free from fossil fuels. That's right. Yes, <laughs> Terra Texas is going to try to bring a future free from fossil fuels. <laughs> <laughs> I did TTT and then the Fs. <laughs> uh, well, here's another story that uh, we uh, thought about, or I was cued to this uh, by looking at a poster that I have in my office, just right over my shoulder here. It and is. We're going it's to hiding in plain this. sight. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're going to like share that bottle this, there. This particular, <laughs> yes, another thing hiding in plain sight. Exactly. Um, so let me just. As soon as Mike finds, Mark finds the share button. <laughs> there it is. He was just using it. Done. Okay. <laughs> now uh, this particular uh, photo is taken from off my wall, uh, where I had the Model Three uh, drawing uh, that sent to uh, early Model Three owners. And I wanted to point out the steering wheel on this drawing. Looks oh, very that. familiar, does it not? Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of looks like the yoke uh, that's going into place on Model S and Model X refresh. So uh, it looks like <clears throat> Tesla's been, and, and we know that Tesla has put different yokes on the Cybertruck, and they had a different yoke on the, uh, the Roadster. Roadster. Uh, but uh, when they did the drawing for the Model 3, they were thinking about this cut-off steering wheel uh, that uh, looks very f similar to what uh, they're planning to do with, or what they will be doing with the uh, S and the X refresh. So the that was kind of cool. lower back then too. Yeah, so that was kind of cool to to think that uh, they've been they've been trying to push this on the mainstream for a while now, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they they certainly love those yokes, and uh, we'll have to see if it's going to be successful in the S. Are people going to uh, love it? Uh, we did a poll a little while ago on our Twitter feed, and 70% of people that responded indicated that, yes, they would order it with the yoke if they had the opportunity over the wheel. Awesome. So, we shall see. We yeah, shall I'm see. Still, I'd still like to try it out, and, and hopefully it's not a case of... Um, where it's just a regular wheel that's got the tops cut off, but uh, if if it's got a different steering ratio or if it's drive by wire or anything like that, I would love to yeah. have a yoke steering wheel. Our next story is kind of a little bit of a, a downer, and of course this is uh, this is what you call a hovering Model Three in Los Angeles area. I, uh, I thought only the roaster could hover. <laughs> well, apparently. <laughs> In in Los in Los Angeles and uh, Southern California, there's a new form of hovering, and that is of course stealing the wheels off the car overnight. So an owner comes out and sees that it's on you know plastic blocks, uh, and the uh, wheels uh, and rims are missing. And uh, this uh, we reported on this previously, and uh, had indicated that uh, there were a number of different people that were. Uh, being affected by this, and uh, the Los Angeles police have put out another warning that uh, this is a little bit uh, rampant in some areas, apparently. So uh, this one actually is a performance. You can tell by the red calipers uh, where mm -hmm. its wheels are stolen, whereas the others could have been stock uh, wheels, the 18s, or they could have been the 19 sport wheels. Not sure which. But yeah. uh, not a good situation. Um, certainly having some sort of... A, a lock nut on every wheel might be a good idea if uh, you're in LA area. Might be a good thing to invest in a fifty fifty dollar uh, uh, option to uh, put a lock nut on every wheel, and at least that would give some people pause. Uh, not sure if it would completely stop it, uh, 
because I've seen people that they just take kind of an over an oversized socket, bang it onto a wheel nut and loosen it anyways. But it, it's better to have something than nothing, I would say. Right. Yeah. At least you have a chance of hearing them do that and maybe... Uh... Uh, also, I would say make sure you have a uh, drive in there and have sentry mode enabled if you're parking out on the street. That's uh, definitely a good thing to have. Yeah, it, definitely. Uh, might help them get caught. You might be able to provide that video evidence that means that these guys go to jail instead of uh, stealing from somebody else. Right. right. I kind of hope that one of these cars catches fires and one of these assholes. <laughs> Because you don't, you, 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 don't, you don't think that they're actually picking it up correctly. I mean, look at how they're setting it down. I mean, thankfully, it's not setting it back down on the asphalt, but uh, we don't know that they're using the correct jack points. Uh, they're probably scratching the paint on this Oh, plastic. my gosh. Do you, if, if, there's no way they're using the correct jack points. Not a chance. No, they're these, just throwing... These guys are there behind. for speed, right? They're, yeah. probably, they're probably jacking it up with the central point. And pulling mm-hmm. both wheels off and throwing Same something time. underneath it and moving on to the next side. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that because I was thinking, okay, so you have to get your wheels and tires replaced, but no, if they actually damaged your car on top of that, oh, that's yep. that's even worse. Absolutely, jerks. It's always I mean, ruiners out there ruining it for everybody else. I understand right. times are tight and even more so right now, but you don't need to steal. And. It's just it's an invasion of of, of of your space. It's yeah, very much. It's, it's, sad. Sad, it's sad, but uh, again, turn on that sensory mode. Make sure that it's on at all times. If you don't have a drive, get a drive and turn it on. And secondly, spend the fifty bucks and get the wheel lock nut set and uh, get those installed. At least that will give you some protection. Um, better than it being an easy mark where they just look at it and say, okay, there's no problem with this one. We'll just take it because there, there's no wheel nuts. So, so uh, on the original Roadsters, they uh, some of the first runs actually had the VIN number etched, not etched, stamped into the uh, alloy wheels. Maybe it'd be worth considering getting your VIN etched into your tires on the inside. Or not the tires, obviously, but the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the tires wheels. not a good idea. <laughs> In, in the, inside the barrel of the wheel or on the inside lip of the uh, of the wheel rim. And here's another idea. Green the only was uh, prompted about, hey, wouldn't the uh, wouldn't the T uh, TPMS have some sort of a Mac number on every one oh, of those? Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and he he indicated that yeah, it probably does have a Mac number on every one of those. Well, they uh, definitely TPMS. do on the new ones because so. they're Bluetooth on the on the on the new ones for twenty late twenty twenty and, and yeah and twenty twenty ones. And of course, the black market is driving this. Uh, they so, are. Uh, if if you uh, if you come across a great deal on Tesla rims, you know, keep in mind you're probably buying your neighbor's stolen rims. Uh, that's just that's just the fact of it. So, uh, yeah. please uh, don't buy from the used market uh, because uh, if if there's no clear connection to a person's car that just upgraded their rims and you got some guy that's just selling rims off the side of a truck then guess what those are probably hot rims and uh mm-hmm. you're you're only helping criminals uh, by buying the product so yeah, keep and that in mind as well your, and if you give them your address when you uh you know to, yeah. to delivery or something then a week later they might just come back by your place and see if they <laughs> <laughs> take them again <laughs> oh, so, so, so my next question with that uh is do the typical Tesla scuffs that so many owners have, do they protect you or make you more of a target? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure about that. Oh, it make it easier way, to, to it? find your wheels. Hey, I scuffed it right here and here. Oh, <laughs> Those oh. are my scuffs. <laughs> it's like yeah. a fingerprint of <laughs> yes. uh, curb rash. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, probably yeah, able to avoid it. Park <laughs> inside if you can. That's, yes. that's the best way if you can. Well, next, uh, Elon uh, had made a filing. Well, Tesla as a company made a filing to the SEC, and uh, they, uh, Elon decided that his title wasn't what he wanted and uh, decided to change it. So now instead of CEO, uh, Elon still is CEO, but he's changed the CEO title uh, to be called uh, Techno King of Tesla. That's the new title. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, he also uh, changed the another one for another member who was part of finance, and uh, his his uh, title is now Master of Coin. 
Yes, that's Zach Kirkhorn, the CFO. Is uh, he's retaining his title of CFO, just like Elon is retaining <laughs> his title of, of CEO. But they are also now the techno king and the master of coin. That's I so just hilarious. I just imagine the Tesla lunchroom and the two of them just laughing their heads off as they get the new <laughs> business cards delivered to them. Um, so, so in in Elon's case, he he threw away his title a while ago. Did he get it back, or is oh, this coming um, from CEO to uh, Techno King, and they're ignoring the blank? Yeah, so he was not able to throw away uh, his title uh, back when he when he tried because uh, corporate governance rules require certain titles to be filled uh, for a public company. So, uh, well, he was filling the role, but did they had did, did they make him put it back on his on his badge? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. He had, okay. he had to officially retain the title of CEO. So CEO dash Techno King. Techno King. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I especially like both of these titles because it's not just a single joke. It, they're both multi-layered joke. Um, Techno King, obviously, uh, Musk's delivering all this high-tech stuff, so so that. But also Techno, as uh, you know, he's got Don't Doubt Your Vibe in his his recent um, uh, one about uh, what were they called? I want to say NFC. NFT. NFT. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. So he's putting and out. Yeah, his techno Arambe. music. So uh, yeah, so there you go. So uh, so that one's got those two two layers, which I thought was cool. And then Master of Coin, uh, Game of Thrones fans know that that's the person in charge of the treasury, which you know goes with CFO. But yeah. also with the recent Bitcoin investment, uh, he's the master of the uh, crypto Bitcoin. So uh, yeah, that was another nice dual layer joke there that I thought was cool. Absolutely. Yep, these guys are having a ball. You can just tell. They're just laughing their heads off, I'm sure. Yeah. And, of course, uh, you know, since the company is successful and things are blue sky ahead of them, why not have a good laugh here and there? Uh, it only makes sense. It, uh, it's, it's When you enjoy what you're doing and things are going well, uh, man, it's, it's a great feeling. Absolutely. Next, uh, Jerome... Uh, More title changes. Yeah, has uh, changed <laughs> his title as well. But uh, he's not going to be Master of Coin or uh, anything similar to that. No Game of Thrones jokes here. Uh, Jerome has now moved from being president of automotive to uh, being in a new role focusing on heavy trucking. So the semi uh, is having Jerome uh, head the, uh, I guess, the spear uh, for the creation of these vehicles and the start of the, the new rollout of uh, Tesla Semi. So uh, not really surprised. Jerome's been involved with the Semi almost since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's expressed interest uh, in the project and uh, has spoken many times about uh, how he is uh, enticed uh, for this new project and looking forward to it. So uh, not a big surprise that he's been named basically the head of that uh, particular uh, division at this time. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if um, he's been wanting to do this ever since he came to Tesla and that the, the whole semi program even started because that's what he was interested in working on. And uh, Musk said, sure, come and help us get uh, uh, three and Y going and into high volume. And then uh, then you can move on to your passion project of, of the semi. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're supposed to start seeing some semis roll off a production line this year. And uh, we'll see if uh, Jerome will have any updates for us uh, as they start to move along. We've been so seeing uh, the prototype updates. And yeah, prototype's been out and testing on the track. There's a video on our Twitter feed that Tesla had shared uh, of it uh, driving the test track at Fremont. So, what were you saying, Patrick? I was going to say, uh, so uh, if uh, Jerome was to get the, a new title, what would uh, his funny title be? Um, <laughs> Convoy King. Master uh, of Heavy Metal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. Yeah, 18-wheeling uh, Jerome. <laughs> BJ and the Bear or something. There you go, BJ and the Bear, yeah. <laughs> GG and the Bear, yeah. Yes, there you go. AG and the Bear. <laughs> Uh, last but not least, uh, Tesla, uh, Texas, uh, may be getting a bit of a boost. So there's That's been right. a new bill introduced uh, by the Texla, the Texas uh, local government about the ability for 
electric vehicle manufacturers to sell their own vehicles direct. And this, of course, uh, we've talked about this many times on this show. Uh, once uh, uh, Gigafactory Austin was named, or Gigafactory Texas was named, we uh, all said, you can't buy a, a, a Tesla in Texas direct. You have to buy it from the outside and it's shipped to you. So uh, this, of course, would allow Tesla, uh, being an automotive uh, EV maker that only makes EVs, this particular bill is targeting those type of companies and would allow them to sell directly uh, to the consumer because they don't make any other car, uh, kind of car, just EVs. And uh, of course, this is going to benefit other EV manufacturers as well uh, if this does go through. But we had all said on the show that we could not imagine that Tesla ponied up the money and the jobs that are going to be made at of course, uh, Gigafactory Texas, and not have some politicians promise them that we'll get some sort of law passed that you can sell vehicles direct. Yeah, we did say that, but I also think that it's possible that they could get stabbed in the back. This is Texas of all places. <laughs> <laughs> right, but it, it would be so ironic. So Musk lives in Texas now, so it, he would not be able to buy a vehicle from his factory, uh, from his home state, <laughs> nope, can't do that. Sorry. Yep, but but if this goes through, then that'll be good for Tesla, Aptera, Lucid, and and many more that are yeah, not really going to do dealerships. I mean, exactly. If you're going to do it without the middleman, then you should. That should be your prerogative. We're talking, you know, free enterprise. You want to do it the way you want to do it without killing people. Go right ahead. And that's what Texas claims to be. You know, the state. Claim it. Uh, yeah, to be. Uh, this business-friendly, free enterprise state uh, with the least number of business restrictions, and yet they have this legal requirement for a middleman. Uh, yeah, that was just uh, a constructive. Now this lobby. this <laughs> this bill has been just put out, but there's still going to be a heavy lobby, I imagine, from the dealers' association that, of oh, course, yeah. block this type of language in anything previously. So oh, yeah. uh, we will have to see. And as Patrick had pointed out to us before. I guess the Texas legislation that sits only sits once every two years. Yep. So they have to get this passed. Otherwise, we'll have a factory that opens up and they won't be able to sell their own cars uh, direct. So uh, it has to get passed in this particular uh, session, uh, which uh, only lasts uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, yep. So we, we will see what kind of battle uh, shows up. But at least the legislation is now out there. And uh, we can, uh, you know, start moving on, I guess, voting on this after they hear rebuttals uh, from the other side. Yeah, but what we saw last two times that they were in session was they actually made it into the into the hopper and then it just died. It didn't get a vote, didn't get a look, and yep. hopefully that doesn't happen again. I, I, I would be shocked if it actually didn't pass. I just can't well, imagine I mean, spending that type of money on a factory and jobs. And look Texas the, completely turned their back on them. Look at who the big contributors are. It's all dealerships. Well, that's so. true. That's true. Mm -hmm. It's but not I, a done deal by any means. I'm, I'm no. hoping that they do the right thing because that would be so stupid of them to have invited them in to do this factory. And then, I mean, this is going to be one of the larger employers in their, in their state. It's Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not like um, Texans don't get... Teslas now, they just have to go through this extra hoop of, of having it delivered in another state and then transferred in. Oh, let's it's talk not... about how they service their Teslas in Texas. Oh. <laughs> you gotta you gotta call California. California's gotta call the subsidiary, uh, which is the repair shop. If you need further service, the service center's gotta call back to California to call you to Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah, so so the cars are still being delivered, they're still being serviced. All, all they've done is create some hassle. Paperwork. <laughs> yeah, and really, that's not free enterprise. Come on, that's not comp competition. You want the best products to win based on what they deliver to to actual people. Yeah, uh, put them all yeah, on a level, people. level playing field. Yeah, okay. so the legislators have to ask themselves, do they serve the Texas populace or do they serve dealerships? Yep. Uh, and then Jim J.C. Jimbo asks, how big will the battery be for the semi-trucks approximately? Uh we had initially estimated about a megawatt hour, right. but uh, recent 
news has come up that we're now thinking that it's closer to 500 kilowatt hours and maybe 300 kilowatt hours for the short range. Yeah, so there is, there is a, obviously an efficiency uh, thing that they've done uh, or have been able to do. Efficiency plus, you know, battery storage uh, has increased. Uh, so it's it's certainly a lot less than what we had init initially thought when the truck was shown for the first time. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I like so this. It hasn't rolled out yet. And like you said, there are two range versions of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm still holding out for 900 plus on the long range. It's pulling a heavy load up hills um, through the winter, running cabin heat. Uh, they're, they're definitely, they're, yes, you can get a lot with aer aerodynamic, but there's just physics that you, it takes energy to overcome that. That doesn't matter how uh, efficient you are aerodynamically. It's still just moving that weight up the hill. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm still, I know that we, we've seen evidence to the contrary, but uh, until we know for sure, I still think the long range one will be 960-ish. Yeah, it'll be just shy of megawatt hours. My thought as well. I, I like I like this Q and A. We should do these after the uh, after the shoutouts going forward, if if there are any. Yeah, That's cool. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. Well, we thank everyone for uh, connecting with us on the live chat, and uh, please make it uh, make it a schedule for you to come back next week. Uh, we're trying to do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We've had some ups and downs with the live version, but we seem to have gotten it straight out, and uh, we appreciate Casey with all his work on that, that front. And uh, with that, uh, let's roll to some, um, uh, some shout-outs and head home. Uh, Mr. Connor, any, uh, any shout-outs from you this evening? Sure. I am with the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association. You can find us at oeba.org, and we're on Facebook and Twitter. And I also blog occasionally at carswithcords.net. I recently posted my 2020 solar year-in-review. Very good. And was it a good year-in-review? It, it was, yes. <laughs> yeah. And it, the, the year ends with installing the uh, power walls. There so you go. Could get any better than that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. There was Patrick. As soon as the, the blackout happened, he's out going, "Yes! <laughs> look, at, look at all these, look at all these houses are blacked out. I've still got power." His neighbor hates him, but he's time. yeah, my wife uh, didn't allow me to run through the streets gloating. <laughs> <laughs> She's smarter Casey, than I am. Any shoutouts from you this week? Of course. Um, so I'm at uh, YouTube.com/slash Casey Green. And this week, like I said, I've got uh, a, a video coming about the deep dive into Tesla software update 2021.4.12, as well as a couple of other uh, shorter fun ones as well. And then I'm expecting on Friday to be able to jump in, and Friday or Saturday, uh, assuming that Elon's promises hold through, I, I'm expecting to jump in the car and hit the button, and then we'll get started on a deep dive into... Uh, the full self-driving beta. I, I will probably be excited, but I'll try not to be like some of the folks you've seen screaming into the camera. Uh, <laughs> but I will be excited, and you will be able to tell. <laughs> we yes. definitely look forward to that. Absolutely. So, yes. uh, if you're if you're listening, Tesla, please send Casey that download button. He, I'll be uh, good for you. I'll he, be good for he you. He will certainly test it for you. There's no <laughs> doubt there. And uh, yes. you'll get uh, a lot of insightful views uh, as Casey goes through it, as his other videos have shown us in the past. Thank you. Uh, Irwin is asking or mentioning two way EV charging is enabling serious competition in the electricity grid. Yes. And I was excited to see that the Hyundai, uh, Hyundai Ionic 5 uh, has that capability, and Cybertruck has got it. So. And Rivian has got it. The Hummer has got it. So hopefully that becomes just standard, or at least an optional feature. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, David, yeah, we were talking about plugging in the trailer. If that had two-way charging, that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be great. And then uh, David's uh, telling us we did a good show and saying let the sun shine. And uh, Dave B is also telling us good job. Very good. Thank Thanks, you, guys. guys. We appreciate you joining us, and uh, we will see you next week and find out what's going on in the Tesla life. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Lee Moon. Absolutely, Lee Moon. Thank you. We'll see you next week.